Welcome, and uh, as we get started, I want to call your attention to the headsets on your seat. Um, our guest will be speaking in Arabic, so if your Arabic is rusty, uh, you can find the English interpretation on channel one, and channel two has Arabic. So please wave your hand if you're having trouble with your headsets. Yeah? Good. And we've got people along the way, so just wave your hand. Um, my name is Nancy Lindborg. I'm the president of the United States Institute of Peace. And for those of you who are visiting us for the first time, USIP is a congressionally created, independent, nonpartisan institute. And for the last 30 years, we've been working on finding practical solutions for uh, preventing, managing, and, reco and recovering from conflict. It is my very distinct honor today uh, to welcome and introduce His Excellency Dr. Salim al Jabouri, who is the Speaker of the Council of Representatives of the Republic of Iraq. And I'd also like to welcome the entire Iraqi delegation who has uh, joined us here today. It includes many current and former members of the Iraq Council of Representatives. And a special shout out and welcome uh, to Ambassador Fali, the uh, Iraqi ambassador to the United States and a valuable partner for USIP. And as many of you know, uh, Iraq has been a priority for USIP for over a decade. Uh, with the support of our Iraqi and American partners, we've had an office in Baghdad since 2004, and last year we opened an office in Erbil. Uh, and none of this could have been possible without uh, having an amazing team here at e USIP, so I'd just like to acknowledge and thank uh, Manal Omar, who's our Acting Vice President for the Middle East in Africa, uh, Dr. Ali Abu Aoun, who's the director of our Middle East programs, and Sarhang Hamasaid, who leads our Iraq pro, uh, programs. So we're all here today at a time where, when Iraq is confronting enormous challenges, and we are almost to a day, the year since Mosul fell. Um, we have an ongoing violent conflict with Daesh, and the hum, uh, human and the community costs continue to grow. Um, I understand there's about uh, an average of a thousand soldiers and civilians who die every month in this continuing conflict. And we have witnessed three million men, women, and children who have been forcibly displaced from their homes. Um, communities, villages, towns are sustaining considerable damage. However, even as the battle against Daesh continues, it's also critical to lay the future for a more peaceful Iraqi future. Um, we have recently had the honor of hosting Prime Minister Abadi and the Kurdistan region's President Barzani. Both of them have underscored the same call for looking now to the future, for emphasizing dialogue and reconciliation as critical for helping Iraq move forward. USIP teams are working with local Iraq par Iraqi partners now to anticipate that joint Daesh future and to help alleviate the tensions that are arising from the massive displacements and to prevent cycles of revenge in the, li in the liberated areas. We're supporting our Iraqi partners to bridge relations between communities and police in places like Baghdad, uh, Basra, Karbala, and Kirkuk and we're supporting the Iraqi minority communities to advance their rights, working alongside Synod for Peacebuilding and Network for Iraqi Facilitators to help address the aftermath, including of terrible events like the Spiker Massacre. And in this work, we have seen the power of Iraqi communities who are determined to build a better future. We've seen their commitment to come together to resolve differences, and we continue to be inspired by local leaders and partners who are eager to lay this groundwork for a more inclusive, shared peace. Now more than ever is the time to talk about peace. Over the last several months, we've witnessed the tumultuous events that have rocked Iraq. And throughout this recent turmoil, Dr. Salim al Jabouri, today's distinguished speaker and guest, has served as a pragmatic voice. 
He has worked to engage parties on all sides. He has worked to find solutions that work. And he has been an advocate for an inclusive approach to politics that is absolutely essential towards working for reconciliation. Uh, Dr. Jabouri is a prominent leader from Diala. He's a former law professor. And most importantly, I would say he's part of a new generation of Iraqi leadership. Um, this is a generation with the potential to build a more engaging, a more inclusive political process. And he and others are working to position the Council of Representatives to be a key player in the reconciliation process and a more inclusive future. Dr. Al Jabouri will deliver his opening remarks in Arabic uh, before sitting down with our Acting Executive Vice President Ambassador Bill Taylor for a moderated discussion. And for those of you on Twitter, please remember to use hashtag Iraqi speaker to help us expand the conversation beyond the room today. And with that, I'm very pleased to welcome on his first visit to Washington, DC, um, our speaker, uh, Dr. Jalim al Jabouri, the Speaker of the Iraq Council of Representatives, and please join me in welcoming him to the podium. Bismillah <laughs> ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me at the beginning to express my thanks and appreciation to the Institute of Peace, my colleagues and I, uh, for this um, uh, impor important opportunity to talk about important issues during a very sensitive and difficult times. I wanted to uh, limit my talk about peace, uh, uh, that uh, my talk would be uh, uh, limited to uh, peace in my country, in your institute, a respectable institute that is ke uh, keen to achieve peace and uh, reducing crisis in the world. But uh, regrettably, I will be talking to you after uh, the passing of a year uh, for the appearance of Daesh where, and, uh, and its uh, occupation of one third of the country and uh, the uh, accompanying destruction and murder and killing in the uh, governorates that were attacked and uh, what it caused to women and the destruction of uh, churches and uh, 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 antiquities and and uh, uh, taking women hostages and destruction of churches and the holy shrines, uh, which uh, but some of these uh, uh, antiquities return to thousands of years in uh, depth of history. Dear friends, despite all of our pains uh, to about uh, for what uh, have inflicted our people in terms of destruction, we uh, were not surprised about this movement because I know that it is a result of the policy of uh, exclusions and depressing of uh, freedoms during the past few years and a natural resort to the administrative corruption and financial corruption which uh, is spread to the uh, uh, in military institutions and other institutions of the state. As we know, and we spoke with our allies inside and outside and our friends about the uh, catastrophic results that, that, uh, to which these policies will lead us to. But regrettably, they did not take our advice seriously. And uh, we were dealt with as, as if we are, that this was going a part of the struggle between various parties. But others uh, 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 considered this phenomena a, a regular, a normal uh, struggle uh, uh, that started in 2014 and is still continuing until today. And uh, as a result to everything that we have warned about, we have all witnessed how Iraq has been transformed to a country of displaced. Iraq has produced about 3 million displaced in the areas that are controlled by Daesh. And within the framework of the dialogue that produced our LIMP uh, experiment, we have become, uh, we, has, we started tying those uh, displaced uh, to uh, our fi uh, files of failure. 
And instead of containing them and to redirect their ideas, we prevented them from reaching the shore of safety. And as a result, that we have uh, uh, created uh, a, a large army of recruited people who are being targeted by Daesh. Uh, the future of the displaced has been wasted in the corners of Iraqi politics that is focusing on balances internally and externally and our fear of providing uh, 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 cheap oil for Daesh. Ha and here we are, you and us, working, uh, uh, watching the results of this, uh, which uh, resulted from the displacement without providing anything that is uh, decisive in this respect. Uh, we will continue to play the role of uh, 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 watchers. Dear friends, despite this situation that is so dark, the yet I will talk to you about peace in Iraq. Peace that can be achieved from this war that is led by my, uh, the children of my country in the face of this dark movement in history. Peace that we are aspiring for because we are sure that you and all the forces uh, uh, that loves peace will stand by our side in this confrontation. I m may seem uh, more optimistic than necessary uh, for some of you, but when I say that the situation in Iraq does not call for disparity, despite the blackness of the scene, uh, the source of my uh, uh, optimism is because I know that the Iraqi people do not look at the cost of this confrontation, but by the, with the values and the principles at the forefront front of which is peace and uh, uh, reconciliation. But they need the help of their friends to be able to be victorious on Daesh, and you are the closest friend to us. And at the time we thank you, our partners in the international coalition led by the American uh, country, uh, which is standing by us in the middle of this uh, battle, we could believe that they have to multiply their efforts, the military efforts in our country, and to increase their aid for uh, 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 equipping the uh, emerging democracy through uh, the, the countries that are members of the coalition to... Uh, 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 to save our children from the policies of not keeping the previous agreements. Dear friends, I, as a, a, a speaker of the Iraqi parliament and a man specialized in law, I think that there is no other uh, alternative to, to go into this battle side by side uh, uh, with you in all of our battles because uh, it is a complementary and it is a valve uh, so that we will not have any other terrorist organization on the ruins of Daesh that would threaten our security and peaceful peace and uh, uh, and, uh, tem and the implementation of the parties of the tri uh, uh, tri tri uh, the three party uh, uh, solution by under the very uh, the uh, uh, the republic and the council so we the law of the national guards will be the guarantee for the security of the uh, governorates that are threatened we must uh, uh, end co all aspects of military uh, uh, outside of the uh, military uh, because this is a militarization of society and the militarization of society is an introduction to have a uh, systems that are totalitarian uh, and to a past that we do not want to come back. We must uh, to have a political uh, 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 reform and a restructuring of the uh, security institutions based on efficiency and away from the quota system. Uh, ethnic as well as uh, sectarian. It is important also to approve the law of the unified uh, federal law and to separate between the powers of the state in order to uh, uh, pro uh, maintain the, uh, the court, their uh, 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 independence uh, in taking decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, the method 
uh, of uh, reforming the political process in Iraq cannot be successful without getting rid from the policies of regional polarization which made Iraq a field for a regional struggle on behalf uh, of uh, 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 partners uh, and uh, the Iraqis are paying the price for it in their blood and their wealth and we cannot get out of this policy except with this help of our friends in the United States of America and the Western states that have an influence in the region through pressures on the Iraqi political forces and the uh, decision-taking centers in order to stop their interven the intervention in the internal affairs of Iraq and support Iraq uh, to, uh, 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 to reduce the period of confrontation with terrorism because terrorism has become a method of interference in the affairs of Iraq uh, through Daesh uh, with a ways and the repetition of a particular model from the terrorist operations which have touched all of our children, our schools, our, our churches and mosques and the uh, uh, markets. Iraq with its natural resources uh, and the, the success of its democratic process through reform and uh, establishing uh, confidence between the partners will be a source for a democracy uh, for in the whole area uh, as uh, the american uh, message was after the getting rid of the saddam hussein in 2003 dear friends finally i put before you uh, some principles that expresses a a comprehensive project for reform and uh, overcoming the challenges. The first issue, we must think about stability after liberation of the areas uh, captured by Daesh and to give a model that we can, through it, uh, uh, motivate those who are still uh, were living under the authority of Daesh in Nainia Wal Ambar so that they can do everything possible to face this challenge. The second thing, if the the military support uh, is surrounded by restrictions and controls that cannot be violated by uh, friendly countries, they the states must not neg neglect human uh, support. The third uh, issue, there is a struggle in Iraq between the state and non-state, the institutions, uh, constitutional institutions that were established based on elections must be maintained. There is also uh, uh, other institutions that work outside of the framework of the state and wants to take the authorities to itself and to impose itself on the society and to make the decisions herself. Building a stable state in Iraq is a guarantee for the protection of our minorities and the uh, marginalized. Uh, the important legislations cannot be forgotten and, and we cannot uh, violate it. Uh, arming the tribes uh, uh, what, uh, and their training and equipment because the local populations alone and, uh, who are the ones that can uh, uh, end Daesh and changing the role of the tribes in uh, 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 ignoring them uh, uh, will make the, uh, the problem complete. So we must also rehabilitate the local police in the areas controlled by Daesh and the, and the uh, liberating forces will remain under the one control represented by the commander general of the armed forces the problem of the multiplicity of leadership will add will lead, lead to the collapse of the army just as happened in ramadi national reconciliation will prepare our way for a military victory our real uh, 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 building a, a modern state through the help of its friends Extremism and terrorism is a very strange phenomenon in the Iraqi society and it has the resulted from political uh, circumstances that were complicated and will end with, its, with the end of this problem. Therefore, eliminating Daesh will help our abilities to establish peace 
and the National uh, Guards is a new idea and an important one, but it could not be a cover f for emergency cases that threaten the security of st the state. And some societies sometimes resort to a miserable solutions, so we should not contribute to uh, this. So without hope, no, nothing. Uh, a person can uh, take uh, uh, d important decisions in his, uh, in his, for his f uh, future. I call on you to support the re just request of our people to get rid of terrorism and your efforts to spread the uh, uh, ideas of living in peace and co understanding. And I call on you and all those who love peace on the earth to support the reform and democracy in Iraq. And, uh, and this is why I decided to come to you here uh, uh, so that we can invest our partnership in this endeavor or otherwise our fate will be totally different. Thank you for listening to me and peace be upon you. And thank you. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much for, for that presentation. Uh, we were most impressed uh, with your words at the outset, uh, expressing your optimism, expressing your commitment to peace, uh, expecting, expressing your friendship with people here um, and other allies around the world. So this is a very positive message that uh, you have brought to us uh, here today. You have a, a difficult job uh, as the Speaker of the Council of Representatives, um, uh, a body that you would probably agree has sometimes had difficulties um, in coming to agreement and coming to compromise and coming to final conclusions that, that support the movement forward uh, of the country of Iraq. Can the Council of Representatives, under your leadership and with the other leaders uh, in your and the deputies that you have, can the Council of Representatives be a place in Iraq that does bring together, that does bring the reconciliation that you talked about, that does come with compromise to be able to move forward? Is this something that, that you see under your leadership of the Council? Uh, uh, thank you very much. When we started in this term for the Council of Representatives, we had a lot of uh, compilations of problems. Uh, uh, the nature, for example, between the executive and the legislative, between the Council of Representatives and the, and the government, and to the point that it had delayed the issuance of many laws. The laws and also uh, postponed the oversight role. And I can say that this was the main challenge. We were, could have been able to build a balanced relationship, but at the same time, we agree about the common grounds and we can differ on uh, the details, but uh, the situation in Iraq requires from us cooperation. So we decided to, uh, to talk with the uh, uh, with the cooperation between all authorities and the respect of authorities of a, every side. So therefore, today in this Council of Representatives, the Presidency of the Republic and the government that is present uh, uh, approved the budget for 2015 in a uh, record time. And uh, we were able to issue some principal legislations. They have reached the point of voting. And we are going to vote on the law of par political parties, which is a very important step. Also, the media law 
it stayed six years in the council, and we were able now to uh, reach voting for the uh, federal law, and this has been in the council for eight years. We also have other legislations, principal legislations. The council, the current council, came during very critical time the uh, appearance of Daesh and the occupation of several areas. Uh, yet the members of the council are uh, doing their job uh, uh, for in this, within this framework. Yet I think that the national reconciliation and uh, uh, it's being launched from the Council of Representatives and without serious and real reconciliation between the components of the social computer uh, or the political powers is very necessary. Therefore, we have a continuous dialogue with the parties uh, in order to achieve this project. Uh, so of the pieces of legislation um, that you have, uh, uh, you have laid out as your agenda. You also mentioned in your remarks a piece of legislation on, you, you mentioned your remarks, legislation having to do with the National Guard. Many people here will know, um, you know all too well, that there are many military formations in Iraq. The National Guard law would bring some order to this. How would the National Guard law work with the Shia militia or the forces um, under, uh, un under those control, with the Peshmerga, um, with the Sunni National Guard? You mentioned that these should all be under the control, the command, of the Commander-in-Chief. How would the new law and these three or, or more forma military formations work together? Frank, with you, first, why did the idea of the National uh, uh, Guards uh, came out? Uh, why it was put into the political agreement and it's considered a condition for the formation of government. There was a feeling at the time that some governorates are not represented in the security uh, and military aspect. And this lack of representation led to the presence of Daesh in their areas because the population of these areas were not able to confront Daesh because they are not partners in taking the security decisions. So the idea of the National Guards were again emerged uh, to, to deal with this problem. Uh, first, the, uh, the problem is that to have all the Iraqi communities communicate in the military apparatus and uh, to improve the, uh, to, uh, to uh, defend the uh, areas bef uh, 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 so they will not ne need Daesh. So, particularly, when we agreed to establish a national guard, at that time the agreement was to have to do it locally uh, under the uh, orders from the governor, and in larger issue, he will take the role of the commander in chief of the armed forces. After we established uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the law, uh, now it is being uh, put to vote, but part of the political forces so that the, the, the project of the national uh, forces have deviated from the main track that it was uh, put for it. It will be just another military establishment that will uh, be added to the other ones, uh, such as army or intelligence or uh, police. And that is not really the, the purpose of it. Also, the National Guard, in the eyes of some, is a cover for the militias that work outside of the official circles. Uh, in our constitution, anybody who is not in the armed forces uh, cannot carry arms. Anyone who carries army, he's a militia. And, and according to Article 9, uh, these militias are prohibited. So, consequently, we must find a, an official way you, we can rely on to uh, prevent this multiplicity of loyalty because this is not going to lead us to a, any progress. The law of the uh, uh, National Guards uh, is now being discussed. Uh, uh, what do we need from this law? Some say that if this is going to be a new case, 
uh, 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 it's going to be like the rest. Uh, it's not going to do what it's supposed to do. And others say, no, it's not going to be like that. Uh, uh, if this unified national command and the military effort is successful in certain areas, when the military in these various components does liberate areas and, and areas are liberated from Daesh, you mentioned in, in, your, in your remarks that reconciliation that uh, uh, stabilization would, would be important. We have some experience, you have some experience, some Americans have some experience in this effort. How would this time be different from the previous times in stabilization, reconciliation, to avoid the problems uh, that, that could come if, if we make the mistakes again? Of course, this is an important matter. It is a comprehensive project. Some areas in which Daesh uh, are there have committed uh, heinous crimes and was liberated. The local population in several areas need uh, some kind of harmony to be able to coexist. There are some who support Daesh and some who are against it. So there is a control from groups that were allowed to carry weapons and others that were not allowed to carry weapons. Consequently, some parties became more stronger than others. The models uh, are there. Uh, for example, when there are those who used to carry weapons even if he supports the military forces against Daesh, but when the Daesh was uh, uh, moved out from the governorate, uh, th those who have weapons are, are in a much more powerful situation than others. How can we create an equal situation? We know that anybody who carries weapons have uh, ability to impose his will on others. And we have several examples in Salah al and other governors. So I call for the international community to, to focus on a project for stability after the liberation of the areas from Daesh. This project for stability uh, is not uh, 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 assistance in kind and food and uh, others, but it is uh, uh, to achieve stability uh, and to build a new democracy and work on the minds of people and uh, trying to spread the spirit of participation and uh, reconciliation. And uh, this is not a human project. It is a human project, but uh, it, uh, it is also a, a security uh, project. So it's important that Daesh does not come to us under a new name. How can we, uh, uh, can it come if we achieve justice and stability? It will return if there is marginalization and exclusion and if there was a feeling that they are not, people are not allowed to participate. So the important message we must send to the uh, inhabitants of Vainanoa who are not less than two and a half million people under the rule of Daesh, some of them are afraid, some, some of them doesn't have any financial power, and some have, uh, are women and children. The most important message to send to them that the, uh, the models that we established after the liberation of Daesh, from Daesh, are now in much better condition. But if these models are bad, they will not think of uh, venturing with their life against Daesh. Why would they uh, why, uh, uh, defeat Daesh? So we should have a project for establishing stability. Uh, uh, takes into into account the security and uh, the, uh, the continuity and democracy. Uh, uh, on your first visit to the United States, you'll be able to join us here you will find a group of, uh, of very interested people here, very interested in your country, in the direction that your country, and in the peace that, that you've just described. Let me open the floor to questions. I'm going to do, I think, two at a time. He'll answer one at a time, but let me do two at a time so that 
a microphone can be in your hands and, uh, and, and we'll save some time that way. So, why don't we start up here, right here, yes, and then up here as well uh, for the second question. Nope, back, nope, back, there you go. Very good. Sir, uh, name and affiliation for the speaker. Uh, my name is Abdel Halim Rajal. I work for the uh, counter violence extremism on Somalia. Uh, thank you for hosting uh, this uh, very important forum. And I would like to welcome Dr. Salim al Jabouri and his delegation. For years, I worked with many Iraqi groups between 2004 to 2011 on the IVLB program. So I have very interest in, uh, in what's going on in Iraq, like in Somalia. Uh, I have a question that's. Um, uh, I cannot find an answer for it, which is now uh, specifically with the, the pop popular um, mobilization forces uh, that's taken in Iraq. Many of uh, the Sunni area, they are complaining that uh, this is a Shia-led uh, forces that are uh, doing a lot of atrocities in the region. <laughs> so I would like to know your, um, your intake into that. And uh, very quickly, many blame uh, Bush administration for what's going on in Iraq today because of, in 2003, what's called the, uh, the uh, Ambassador Bremer um, number two uh, plan or whatever, you know, the dismantling of the Iraqi uh, army. It's what we are gaining today in Iraq, and I would like to know your insight into that as well. Thank you. <coughs> With regard to the uh, mobilization, uh, popular mobilization, I, I'm going to speak very clearly about that. When Daesh controlled areas, several areas in Iraq, and the uh, Iraqi army collapsed, we found ourselves in a big problem. How could we confront Daesh? So uh, directives were issued from religious uh, leaderships to mobilize the people uh, to support the army and to stand by the army in liberating the areas. There is a positive uh, aspect to this and a negative one. The positive, and when I look to the population of the governorate, and they come from Al Basra or for Al Amara or Al the South, uh, when they're, uh, uh, to, for them to have their bloodshed in Salah al-Din or Diyala because of their presence with the army forces, this is you know, a kind of support. And w we should not deny the great efforts that were exerted and the important role was played by these people. This is a very positive aspect. Uh, 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 supporting the popular forces and uh, 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 to the Iraqi army in the liberation. What happened during the liberation and afterwards, which give this negative picture? They were in actions, uh, burning and uh, theft, and there were some practices that sh uh, showed that these forces are not regular forces and they are not disciplined and some of their uh, misdemeanors uh, were bad and as a result uh, we cannot say who is responsible and should be punished and held accountable for this and frankly speaking even the idea of mobilization as an idea which uh, uh, have, uh, means uh, participation of all people, Sunnah and Shia and the Kurds. The Kurds have, of course, the Peshmerga, and they are stable. The Shia has the popular uh, mobilization, and clearly in response to the religious authorities, but the Sunnah, how can we uh, contain them? And what is the framework they're going to be working through it so they perform their duties in confronting terrorism? They have a previous experience in the, in the tribes. They confronted Al-Qaeda, and many of the children of the tribes have the desire to confront Daesh, but they don't have the weapons and do not have the capabilities to allow them to enter into confrontation. So they were using forces that come out of their governorates to defend their areas. Now, the number of the uh, those mobilization forces reaches 100,000 individuals, but from the population of the governorates that were occupied by Daesh alone, 
uh, and we have 17,000 only that belong to al Hajj or the mobilization. So we must also take into consideration that uh, because uh, the, uh, we need training or equipping to these uh, forces and Danny had as well tell you will follow uh, this gentleman right here so if the if the uh, mic can get to this person right here yeah um, yes Michael Gordon New York Times um, mr. speaker um, uh, body became prime minister of Iraq have there been any significant steps towards political reconciliation and are you satisfied with the pace of political reconciliation in your country there seems to have been no progress on an amnesty law you mentioned the National Guard the National Guard doesn't exist because your Council of Representatives can't pass legislation on that um, a case can be made that the international community should do more, but the perception here is that Iraqis haven't done enough on political reconciliation. Do you share that? And what do you think needs to be done? Thank you. Al Abadi, we look him as partners, and. Uh, he needs support, and he also uh, he must uh, take initiative to uh, implementing agreements that were concluded in the past. Because waiting or delaying will create a kind of feeling uh, that of no commitment to agreements that were neutral. And the project of reconciliation, we are partner with him in it, and we will continue to operate to achieve it. It is not an easy project. It is not slogans. It's a practical project with commitments on both sides. So my evaluation to this project is not at the, up to the required level. The reconciliation project is not really convincing yet for me. but. There are many challenges that are facing us all, and definitely the matter requires efforts from everybody in order to be able to achieve it. Uh, we cannot blame one side alone. Uh, in the truth is that those who are committed have fall upon them the greatest burden, but we are all partners in the results that is achieved. So this will be the next one here, but before for you, Madam, uh, right here. Hi, I'm Naseba Yunus, Director of Research at the Project on Middle East Democracy. Um, you made a very compelling point that in order to inspire Iraqi Sunnis who are living under Daesh controlled territory uh, to take up arms and, and to fight against Daesh, that we have to offer those Sunnis a vision of the future that they can hope to have in Iraq and a vision of Iraq that treats them better than it, they were treated before uh, before the Abadi government. And some of the key things that need to happen have been very clearly stated by people such as yourself. A National Guard, an end to debathification, uh, a reform uh, in a number of different areas that have just been stonewalled by the Iraqi parliament. What, what are the main obstacles to these reforms taking place? What is the source of the objections that your fellow parliamentarians are mounting against these reforms that have been floated for close to a year now? And how can we begin to overcome those objections? With regard to the legislations in this framework, and the most uh, prominent, of course, is the law of the National Guards. It was decided that on the 30th of uh, uh, May, we will put, the, uh, put it to vote after the committee provided its final report on the law. Well, but as I said, uh, in its final uh, language, some of the political parties thought that this subject the, 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 the requires discussion. Is this the formula that we agreed upon or because if we work in voting to decide the matter, 
they will be uh, large blocks that can uh, uh, the settle the situation to its according to its own interest. But we do not want this very important issue to reach consensus. This is the method that we are following now. So the issue of consensus is very important uh, in the aspect that we consider very crucial. Uh, the law of the National uh, Guards may require uh, simple discussion, and at the beginning of the next term in July, we may in fact uh, adopt it. But as I said, approval of this law of National Guards, which deals with the problems that it was created for, and not just the process of having a new system that is not different from what is present in the army or in the interior or in intelligence and the security uh, apparatuses uh, in general. So, uh, this gentleman right here will need the next mic, but before you, um, Madam, yes, please. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. <laughs> Sorry, actually, I need to ask my colleague and my dear brother, whom I <laughs> work with him <coughs> at the Iraqi parliament, one simple question. Uh -huh. What is the definition of the reconciliation. I want to know from my dear friend, the Iraqi and I Sorry, I, I didn't say that. I am Judge Zakiya Haki, the first female judge in the history of Iraq and Middle East. And this is, uh, I am proud to be that because this is something in, in the favor of my country, Iraq. And Judge, we are very honored to have you, you here. Thank you, Mike. Welcome. Just uh, <laughs> and the, the person that works for his country, those grew, uh, misguided people who are now, with whom should we make reconciliation? With the Ba'athists, the murderers, those... Uh, the ISIS and killing. We, we must have. وبدونها وكذلك بالنسبة للحرس الوطني أو الحشد إحنا كنا عراقيين. We are all Iraqis. She keeps switching from English into Arabic. It's very confused. Please tell her to speak in one language. موضوع الشنة والسؤال لم يكن لدينا هذا من قبل. نحن Iraq. All of the. Thank you for the words that were given by the lady, the uh, deputy. She was uh, a judge and became a deputy, and we worked with her in uh, human rights in various areas. Uh, frankly speaking, there are two classes in the Iraqi society, uh, the society and the politicians. For 10 years, they raised the uh, motto of reconciliation, and they mean so, so, re, reconciliation of society. I would like to say clearly that the Iraqi society, as a society, not as a political class, does not have what distinguishes it with regard to uh, sectarianism. I believe that uh, I am from the largest tribe in Iraq, Al Jabur, which is in the north and the south, Sunnah and Shia, and they are all are, have relationship. Uh, and our problem uh, with regard to the project of reconciliation, when people start 
to uh, use it for their uh, the politicians for their own advantages when they want to get the th sympathy of the people by speaking uh, uh, in a sectarian terms. He tries to uh, uh, use what he thinks is suitable to face his uh, uh, opposition. This is something that should be that we should deal with and we can overcome in, as a matter of fact. Of, uh, Bob here, and then the next one will be in the back here. There was a question further up. Yes, right here. Okay, that's good. So you'll be next. So um, I will speak in only one language. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> my, my name is Bob Kelly. I'm the counselor with Jefferson Waterman, a Washington consulting firm. Um, as an Iraqi, how do you feel about Iranian influence in Iraq? And uh, secondly, was there any irregularities in the vote um, to uh, discharge the governor of Nineveh province? Uh, here in our, under our constitution, the Congress cannot take away, uh, discharge Jerry Brown from the governor of California. So I wonder if the you thought there were irregularities in that vote. But first, about Iran. We, uh, in our law, there are two methods to remove a governor. First, through the Council of the Governors, through voting in the Council of Governors, and the second, through the Council of Representatives, based on a request by the Prime Minister in accordance to the law. Yet, if there is uh, something wrong with the uh, procedures, the law gave uh, the right to appeal uh, 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 the uh, procedures, and the decision by the council can be vetoed. Uh, the, any decision by the council can be vetoed when and uh, looked by the uh, federal court, and it is on the decide whether the procedures were correct or incorrect. One of our problems in Iraq, if, if, uh, from our neighboring countries, the regional countries, have influence in Iraq and they have presence in Iraq. Not only coordination of uh, positions, they sometimes go beyond that and uh, ex uh, to uh, achieve uh, a, 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 a priority on one interest on the other. And I mentioned in my statement that the Iraqi field has become a field for a struggle of influence between states, but we are paying the price for it in our blood, Iraqi blood and Iraqi wealth. Uh, consequently, yes, sometimes some countries think that uh, so part of its national security is to intervene in the Iraqi affairs, and this is rejected by us. We reject any intervention. In the same way, we reject to inter uh, intervening in the affairs of others. No state should intervene in our affairs except for the amount that uh, leads us to achieve common interest, which is allowed by law. Who's uh, here in the back? Yes. Thank you, sir. Hi, uh, my name is Namo Abdullah. I am with Rudaw News Network from Iraqi Kurdistan. Uh, I have two questions, uh, Mr. Speaker. The first one about, uh, you seem to agree that in order to liberate the uh, areas under Daesh, uh, we would need uh, to have the participation of the Sunni forces. And that's also essential for the long-term stability of those areas. But uh, I, I would like to know your assessment of Prime Minister Abadi's reach out <laughs> to the Sunnis. Hasn't it been slow, uh, too slow so far? And whether the United States can do more to uh, you know, make sure there's a Sunni force uh, you know, uh, quick, uh, being formed quicker than uh, it has taken so far? Uh, and do, do you believe the United States should arm directly the Sunni forces or should go through Baghdad? And the second question is uh, about the, there have been a lot of talk about creating autonomous zones like Kurdistan region, which has been basically a model of stability for Iraq. Uh, do you believe the Sunnis want that? Uh, the Sunnis initially, in, uh, when Iraq was invaded, they were opposed to that idea outright. But are they more uh, you know, in favor of that idea now because they believe that they are marginalized in a Shia-led government in Iraq? Thank you. 
طبعا the first question gives me a chance to speak about the accusation Daesh wanted uh, the, the, the Shia uh, uh, to blame Shia uh, 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 and to say that the Sunni has connection with the Shia. I am a Sunni myself and I uh, proud of that, but I, am, uh, I have nothing to do with Daesh and Daesh does not represent the Sunni or the Shia or the Kurds or any component of the Iraqi society because it is, has a project that is have a, a track limited to killing and blood, and this is not an Iraqi. Uh, but how can we deal with this Sunnah so that we can incite them to, uh, we can encourage them to confront Daesh? When the people of Ambar fought against Al Qaeda in 2005 and were able to defeat it, after uh, eliminating Al Qaeda, all those who were carrying weapons for confronting Al Qaeda uh, was uh, uh, take uh, uh, was uh, uh, charged of carrying weapon against the law. Many of them were chased and were tried and detained. Now, uh, when Daesh came, many of them need guarantees. If they confront Daesh, who is going to protect them from the state afterwards? Who is going to protect me from the law if there is no mechanism in this respect? And therefore, they are looking for someone that can stand by them. And the most, and the most, the, the party they need most is the prime minister, and to interact with them. And he uh, uh, is responding to their desire. There is economic problems and problems related to weapons, but the fact of the matter is that in my own conviction that the, the, the arming of the tribes is not good, is not complete. And the question is, can we equip them directly? There are three points that I mentioned, and I mentioned always that we must arm the tribes. We cannot eliminate Daesh except with, our, with the local population. The, through coordination with the federal government uh, to have guarantees uh, so that these weapons would reach the local population to confront Daesh. Three uh, matters that are very important and uh, for the uh, elimination of Daesh. With regard to the regions between Kurdistan and the other areas, the fact of the matter is that some of it is under the control of Daesh now. Some of uh, the oil, oil uh, wells also uh, are under the control of Daesh, and they, they're engaged in c commerce. Daesh is investing these areas economically and uh, is benefiting from the weapons that were left by the Iraqi army during the battles. And so we have to uh, uh, go in the road of joint interest and exchange of relationships, not struggle. What is the value of the land if if its inhabitants are not uh, protected and they're not uh, taking the rights. So consequently, the more we save the uh, lives, that uh, the more we will be able to build partnership by, between the region and the other uh, governorates. Good, we have that uh, holding question, just one second. And there's a gentleman here um, who did the next one. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Abbas Kadam, senior fellow at SAIS, uh, the Foreign Policy Institute, Johns Hopkins, and uh, the director of the Institute of Shia Studies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for coming. Uh, in your statement, you mentioned that there was a need for, or there is a need to dismantle and disarm the fighting groups that currently exist, but also in the same sentence, you ask for arming the tribes. I'm interested in knowing uh, how uh, you view the, any, any reconciliation between these two demands, and would it be better since that there are no other alternatives to fighting and defeating ISIS on the ground in the south of Kurdistan area than the, hash, than the current groups that you want to dismantle? Shouldn't be the call that there should be more control of government over them until a better alternative is available? Thanks again, and thanks for the question. Okay. We have two options. Uh, 
militarily to confront Daesh. The first is to rely on the official military forces only and to strengthen it and to build it and to restructure it and to go in the direction of the uh, in this direction and don't give anybody else to have the authority to carry weapons and this is a preferred option. I think it is idealistic and it is consistent with the idea of the state and its stability. But, we, but the problem is that we are in exceptional circumstances. The morale in the army is not at the level required. The official forces, uh, other official forces don't have this efficiency. So the, we resorted to something other than the army. So if we arm groups, uh, armed groups, uh, Shi the Shia armed groups and the tribes, Sunni tribes, the fear is that we eliminate Daesh, uh, they, uh, will, will they be a struggle in the future? Yes, the answer is yes, they will be. Therefore, we must contain the situation within the frame, official framework <coughs> and within a unified command. But the multiplicity of command and uh, uh, and uh, to, uh, the victory of those who are armed will create a, a, a society that is in dispute with uh, with itself. Are we? Is if you want to take the second approach, there are dangers, but we must be cautious about establishing a system that we can distribute uh, through it the weapons and uh, restore, uh, uh, collect it after the end. Thank you very much, Dr. Tayyil Badri from the Iraqi Monitor. My question is now for the idea of the military war, and I remember today President Obama. This idea كانت من طرفي في سنة 2011. فكرة الحرس الوطني دكتور طيل بدري from Iraqi Monitor from Washington. فكرة الحرس الوطني طرحت من قبلي في سنة 2011 للحزب الإسلامي وللحراك الشعبي. لم تكن مقبولة في ذاك الوقت لأنها لم تكن معروفة ما هو معنى الحرس الوطني اقتبست الفكرة الحرس الوطني من الوضع الأمريكي لأن كما تعلمون العسكرية الأمريكية تحتوي على البنتاغون وتحتوي على الحرس الوطني فيتكون بمثابة تكون بمثابة ضوابط بين الفدرال غورمنت والغورنريت Uh, and and uh, uh, the issue is raised, and it, for the success of this idea, the proposal I have now is to have the command of the National Guards under the presidency of the uh, Republic and not the Prime Minister, in order to achieve the idea of checks and balances. This, the, the presidency of the Republic. Uh, uh, the president is Kur uh, Kurdish, his uh, deputy and uh, al Qanun and Usama Nijafi and Iyad Alawi and Nasir al Anim from the Islamic Party. For if the, it is under the command of the uh, president of the Republic, it will solve many problems. Uh, it could be against the Constitution, since the Constitution is the one that gives the authorities. So. But because the Shia component has violated the constitution, we as a Sunni component should review the law and we should make the National Guards under the presidency of the state. Thank you. Do you want to speak? Okay. So uh, we have time for one last question. Um, and it's here, um, and then we will, we will conclude. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Marina Ottawa with the Woodrow Wilson Center. I'd like to go back to the issue of the Iraqi army that we have already, uh, you, to which you have already referred. There has been a lot of controversy for the reason of why the army did not fight as well as could 
who have been desirable in uh, Mosul and then again in Ramadi. And why, in your opinion, is this the case? It's a problem of training, which seems to be what the US uh, believes at this point. Is it a problem of weapons? Is it a problem of morale? What is the reason for this failure? Uh, since we're talking about the military, uh, to be comment on the remark made by the gentleman, the demand of having the chief of the armed forces, we have a commander in chief with authorities, which is the prime minister, and higher command for the armed forces for the uh, honorary and protocol, which is the president of the republic. And uh, uh, someone with a uh, authority, protocol authorities cannot be. Uh, so the second thing in the army and in Mosul, and it was repeated in Ramadi, in addition to the morale itself, the which was not up to the required level, there are indicators about uh, to move uh, military sectors that uh, n uh, not in, in one in, uh, unified vis vision, even though uh, which uh, raised a lot of uh, question marks. The Council of Representatives began to look at the orders, military orders, to uh, uh, that it arrives uh, to certain sectors with, without the others. So this is a problem resulting from the lack of a unified command. The, the, we will not be able to hold anybody accountable because we don't know who took this decision and why he did. As if, uh, However, we're out of time. I understand that this is, he has an, another meeting. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of all the people here today, let me thank you for your frankness, for your willingness to answer questions. Let me thank you for your optimism um, uh, that you began this discussion. Um, I hope this is not your last visit to the United States, uh, and I hope you will uh, agree to come back to the Institute of Peace uh, when we have more peace to celebrate. Uh, so please join me in thanking uh, the speaker of the for Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats until the official party departs.